Hey guys, welcome to Spec Transfer and to topic 3.4.1 DNA genes and chromosomes from the AQA A level biology specification. As always, let's start with an overview of what we've got to know. We'll first compare the difference between DNA found in prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells. We'll then look at genes specifically in a little more detail, learning that genes can code for either the amino acid sequences of polypeptides or functional RNA molecules. Then you need to know what loci and triplets are, as well as the fact that the genetic code is universal, non-overlapping and degenerate, and what each of these terms mean. Finally, you need to know that in eukaryotes, much of the nuclear DNA does not code for polypeptides at all. For example, there are things called non-coding multiple repeats, as well as introns within genes. So let's make a start. There are three main facts that you should know for each type of DNA, and you should be able to compare the two types in exams. For prokaryotic DNA, it's the fact that it is short, circular and not associated with proteins. Eukaryotic DNA, on the other hand, is very long, linear and associated with proteins called histones. Remember that when asked to compare in exams, you should always mention both things which you're comparing. So for example, you should say that prokaryotic DNA is short, whereas eukaryotic DNA is very long, or prokaryotic DNA is circular, but eukaryotic DNA is linear. Let's have a look at the DNA in the nuclei of eukaryotic cells. The DNA double helix is wound around histones to take up as little space as possible so that it can fit in the nucleus. Histones also support the DNA and together the DNA and histones are coiled up very tightly to form a chromosome. Note that the mitochondria and chloroplasts of eukaryotic cells also contain DNA, which, like the DNA of prokaryotes, is short, circular, and not associated with proteins. This was a spark for a theory known as the endosymbiotic theory, which suggests that these organelles might once have been free living bacteria that were at one point in evolution engulfed by a eukaryotic cell and hereby were of an advantage to the eukaryotic cell which meant that this feature was passed on in evolution. So let's look at this diagram a bit more up close. We have our DNA molecule, and if we zoom out, we have the DNA wrapped around proteins called histones. If we zoom out even further, we have the entire chromosome. Here we have sister chromatids held together by a centromere, and because the DNA has copied itself, the chromosome appears as a double structure with two identical sides. So let's move on to genes. A gene is a base sequence of DNA that codes for either the amino acid sequence of a polypeptide or a functional RNA molecule, such as rRNA or tRNA, both of which are involved in protein synthesis. And this is your definition for a gene that you'll need to learn off by heart and which you'll need to recall in exams. Note that a protein may have a quaternary structure consisting of multiple polypeptides, so we'll have multiple genes that code for it. A gene always occupies a fixed position called a locus on a particular DNA molecule. A sequence of three bases, which is called a triplet, codes for a specific amino acid. Therefore, it's the order of bases in a gene that determines the order of amino acids in a polypeptide, i.e. the primary structure. The genome is the full set of genes in a cell, and the proteome is the full range of proteins a cell is able to produce. Next, the specification wants us to know three key facts about the genetic code. First, the genetic code is universal, meaning that the same code is used in all living organisms. So if you're looking at the DNA in a bacterium or the DNA in a cheek cell of a human or the DNA in the cell of an insect, they all have the same genetic code. The genetic code is also non-overlapping because codons are read consecutively, so each base is read only once. And finally, the genetic code is degenerate which means that more than one codon codes for each amino acid. 
Just to explain this, there are 64 different codons, three of which are stop codons, so don't code for any amino acids. Note that start codons do code for amino acids, so overall we have 61 codons which do code for amino acids. However, there are only 20 different amino acids, and therefore each amino acid must have more than one codon which codes for it. Next we need to consider non-coding DNA. Note that most DNA doesn't code for polypeptides at all. Genes only make up a fraction of DNA. Within sections of DNA that do code for polypeptides, there are two areas of non-coding DNA. Within genes, there are introns, and between genes, there are non-coding multiple repeats of base sequences. So let's first look at introns. These are sections of genes that don't code for anything. They're non-coding sequences. It's actually still debated why they exist, and they don't exist in prokaryotes. Note that coding sequences are called exons because they're expressed in the phenotype to make proteins. Introns need to be removed before translation in gene splicing, a topic which we'll cover later on in more detail in the specification when we talk about protein synthesis. Finally, we have non-coding multiple repeats of base sequences between genes. This is the same base sequence repeated many times, for example, CCTT, CCTT, just repeated over and over again many times. They don't code for amino acids either, so they're called non-coding repeats. Great, so we've had a look at the difference between DNA molecules in eukaryotic and prokaryotic cells. We've had a look at the DNA within the nucleus of eukaryotic cells and chromosomes. We've considered the fact that mitochondria and chloroplasts of eukaryotic cells have DNA, which is like the DNA found in prokaryotes. And we've had a look at genes and how they can code for either the amino acid sequence of polypeptides or a functional RNA molecule. We've covered loci, we've had a look at how the genetic code is universal, non-overlapping and degenerate, and finally we've covered non-coding DNA. That would be it for now guys, thanks for watching, please feel free to comment, subscribe, if you have any ideas or suggestions just post them down below. Next time we'll be looking at DNA and protein synthesis.